Hello guys, Crisp here and welcome back to another video in this one my friends I'm gonna be testing the GeForce GTX 590 Yes, it was the 90 GPU or GPUs because it's actually a dual GPU, you know uh, From 2011 now take a look at this beast of a GPU I'm still not sure why Nvidia decided to put a single fan on the dual GPU card It actually has two GTX 580s. Yeah, that's right two power-hungry Fermi GTX 580s 580s in the same PCB cooled by a single fan. <sighs> Shame. <laughs> so the GTX 590 actually consumes 365 watts. It needs two 8-pin uh, power connectors right there. And yeah, it consumes more than the, the, the RTX 3090, guys. It actually has like a semi backplate, I guess. There's a little bit of backplate right there and another bit of backplate right here. And then these are just showing there, the components. Now, this GTX 590 actually cost me 85 euros to buy. That's a lot to pay for one of these by the way it will bring you more problems and headaches than actual fun in games so i highly recommend you to avoid an sli gpu like this one a dual gpu because basically sli is dead and you're gonna be stuck with one of them and that's why my friends in this video we're only gonna test games that support sli to see the true power of the gtx 590 because if you want to watch the gtx 580 which is essentially one of them enabled and the other one disabled uh you can go watch my video on the gtx 580 i already covered it but yeah this one has 1.5 gigabytes of usable VRAM in games. It actually has three physical gigabytes of VRAM. And you know the best part, guys? It only cost only 700 US dollars when it launched. Like, that's crazy. We got two high-end GPUs back in 2011 for 700 US dollars. And now we're paying like $3,000 for a 3090 or even more because of jacked up prices. But even at MSRP, that GPU is like $1,500. Anyway, that's enough of the intro. Let's get into the game, shall we? All right, guys, let's go over the specs first here in the desktop. As you can see, GeForce GTX 590 is showing up there in MSI Afterburner as well as GPU-Z. Over on the left, you can see that today we're running it with an i7-3770K clocked at 4.5 gigahertz, so it's overclocked, along with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 clocked at 1600 megahertz. Let's get into the first game, which is GTA 5. I'm playing using DirectX 11 1080p resolution and the high settings. I lowered this one, by the way, because of the VRAM usage. You know, some things are set to normal, but most things are set to high. Over here, everything's turned off. Holy crap, these FPS are just insane, guys. We're getting 90 plus percent GPU utilization. The i7? at these FPS, it might be a little bit of a bottleneck, actually. Even overclocked to 4.5 gigs, uh, gigahertz. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. Let's visit Jack, because that's the only thing I live for. I mean, um, that's the thing Michael lives for in GTA 5, of course. He doesn't do anything else, at least in my GTA 5. Let me know if he does something else in yours. Anyway, guys, I haven't really seen massive stuttering issues yet. Um, it's, it seems like it's super smooth. Some Sometimes there is like a frame skip or, or two, but it's not really that bad. I think this is super, super playable and it's actually super enjoyable as well. I wouldn't have a problem playing like this, guys. I love that GTA 5 is actually capable of running well with SLI cards. Of course, it came out in an era when SLI wasn't dead. These days, SLI is pretty much dead and you should not buy two cards. Also, VRAM utilization is almost maxed out it might actually be maxed out right now at 1450 megabytes uh but yeah it's not stuttering still it's pretty pretty smooth uh, as you can see right here guys yeah the fps always drops in grassy areas if you want you can actually disable the grass altogether hello jacqueline how's it going jack's knocked here maybe he's mad because i killed his cousin in new world but well, you can actually set the grass quality to normal and then all of the grass will disappear and you're gonna get more FPS, but I think it breaks the immersion a little bit in this one and I would totally play like this still. It only drops into the lower 40s at times and most of the time... It's gonna be absolutely fine. And next up, we got Far Cry 5. We're playing this one at 1080p using the low settings. If I remember correctly, the GTX 580 actually got like around 30 FPS at 1080p low. 
No, this is bad. This is pretty bad, guys. I am not liking this one bit. Uh, it's... Yeah, you know what? Uh, although GPU utilization, come on, get, oh, it's get in, not get in the back, okay, anyway, <laughs> although both of the GPUs are actually being utilized, for some reason the i7 is bottlenecking them, and we're getting massive stuttering issues in this game, guys, it's not even funny, uh, yeah, guys, I am not liking this experience at all, look at those 1% lows, by the way, it's so, so bad, and I remember getting exactly these results, not the same FPS on average, of course, but these stuttering issues with the GTX 690 as well. That one is also a dual GPU. So although Far Cry 5 actually runs using SLI, um, it doesn't run very well. At least if you don't have enough VRAM. Oh God, I actually killed the guy. <laughs> and you know what? That's a massive issue with SLI. It always has been. Some games have minor hitching, like GTA 5 did, for example. I could notice some frame skipping there. And other games are just completely awful, like this one. Of course, the VRAM doesn't help it, but still. That said, some games will actually run really well and scale really well with two GPUs. And that's the case with Battlefield 4. Four. We're playing this one at the 1080p resolution using high settings and we're playing beautiful Siege of Shanghai. Let's start counting our FPS here and so far just wow look at that experience with a 2011 GPU. Of course the game is from 2013 as well so that's not really very impressive but still. <laughs> also guys I will be testing the beta of Battlefield 2042 this week so stay tuned for that it's gonna be a lot of fun for sure by the way look at that gpu temperature there guys it is really really high Let's try to get this guy where is he oh, oh, oh no maybe he's dead i don't what what the but yeah 80s 70s that's what you get with a dual gpu with only one fan from the fermi architecture it's just it's just gonna run hot look at that health by the way guys I, i'm feeling confident oh you know what? I'm just reserving my skills for 2042. That's that's what's happening here, okay? I, I'm not usually that bad in, in Battlefield games. <laughs> Next up is Rainbow Six Siege. We're playing this one at 1080p resolution using the medium settings preset. I also didn't change the render scaling. It's just set to the preset, except for the texture quality, which is set to low instead of medium because 1.5 gigs of VRAM. Okay, so those GPU utilizations are actually looking great here here and the frame time has stabilized which is amazing it's super smooth right now you know what's good about rainbow six siege you can actually leave the render scaling set to 50 and it will still look decent to be honest like it's really good and i think this is the game with the least stuttering issues out of everything that we played so far at least like, i i'm not seeing any issues whatsoever and gpu utilizations are really really good as well i love it i really like the op the optimization in this game it doesn't even look like a ubisoft title you know <laughs> super weird that it's this is coming from ubisoft Ooh, guy just died there Okay, yes, there he is. All right, we got him. We got him. We got him. It's good, guys. It's good. Can we actually see there? Oh, that's another one. That's that's it. That's it. Just run towards me and die, please. More of that. What the hell is that, by the way? What what is this? What I I don't know. I'm just gonna throw this thing out. Okay, didn't do anything, so I I don't care anymore. Let's go. Let's push. Try to grab the diffuser. I got it. Are we good here? Yes, we are. Okay. Is that a guy? No, that's not a guy, but that is a camera. Uh, let's throw this out. Maybe they don't know what this is. And they're gonna run from there. Nope, they did not. Let's just throw one of these here. I'm just gonna reload. Oh, it's me against everybody else. Jesus! Okay, no! How? Nice try. Thank you, dude, but, uh... Jesus, Roach, calm down! So, uh, we're playing The Witcher 3, of course, at the... 1080p resolution using medium settings and post-processing on low. And look at those FPS. It is actually so good, guys. Like... 
This is amazing. Witcher 3 was a really, really hard game to run back when it launched. Um, it's stuttering a little bit, though. I'm not liking those 1% lows right now. GPU! Look at the temperature of that first GPU! Holy! 87 degrees Celsius right now. That's what Fermi was known for, by the way. <laughs> Extremely high temperatures. And, of course, dual GPU, single fan... Yeah, it's not very good. <laughs> At least the game is actually not stuttering anymore. I think it was just loading some things and like, it's super smooth right now, guys. Look at that, it's amazing. Even the PS4 and Xbox One were struggling playing it, by the way. Those weren't really amazing pieces of hardware, but still, you know, those actually did drop uh, to like the 20s, maybe even low 20 at times. I remember seeing something uh, very, very bad like that. So it's stuttering a little bit right now, guys. As you can see there, few frame time spikes, not very good. That's SLI issues at this point, I think. Yep. Look at that, those are very consistent. Uh, I'm just gonna explode these barrels right here. And yeah, stand close to them. Come on, Jack Cousins. All right, we got another stutter there. Not a huge FPS drop, by the way. And after four minutes of benchmarking, we got 92 degrees Celsius on that first GPU, guys. That is just insane. I might actually need to um, set the custom fan curve for this one. But don't you worry, it's not throttling. I'm going to show you that, actually. Okay, so you can see that the GPU utilization here was pretty high. The temperatures were also pretty high, 92 degrees Celsius there. And looking at the core clocks right here, they are completely flat at 608 megahertz and that's exactly uh, what it shows right there so it wasn't throttling even though it was running at such a high temperature that's just Fermi for you guys. <laughs> Next up, we got Dota 2, and I was actually surprised to find that this actually support SLI. As you can see, both GPUs are being utilized, although it's kind of weird that they're both at the same usage. We're playing this one at 1080p resolution using low settings and DirectX 9. So, as you can see, the i7 will actually be bottlenecking our 590 throughout this one uh, at the low settings, but I'd still choose to play like this because I actually tried it at high and it was a stuttery mess and of course it's dota 2 so it's a competitive title and you want that smoothness you want those higher fps usually uh, and yeah the game plays absolutely wonderfully with the gtx 590 um, again i wasn't really expecting the gpus to be utilized here and I'm still not sure if they are because they're so similar in usage. Yeah, you know what? Just so you know what to expect using high settings, I'm gonna test it out as well here. Just set it to best looking. Here we go, this is it. And now it's not stuttering. It's actually pretty good. Maybe it was... I don't know. I have no clue what it was. <laughs> but as you can see, even on high settings, it's still not maxing out our GPUs. And um, it still indicates a CPU bottleneck, of course, even in team fights and stuff. I could see the GPU usage going up to like 90% for a second there, but yeah. Overall, it's going to be a pretty smooth experience at 1080p. And now let's play kind of an underrated game. This is Hunt Showdown. We're playing at 720p resolution using the low settings here. And I love this thing about this one. Max FPS over 9000. It seems like it's not really using the second GPU for some reason. Last time that I tried it, it was using like 30% of the second GPU, but now it's at 5 Weird. I mean, it's still utilizing a little bit of the second GPU, so <laughs> there's that. Oh, uh, let's put Roach out of his misery. Nothing to worry about, I think. Oops, right there. Okay. He's down. All right. It's actually really smooth, guys. Look at that. Totally playable. Okay, that one hurt us. There we go. He's dead. Oh, that's oh, that's a that's a guy, right? Yeah, that's a guy. No, I don't want this. Okay, okay. Thank you for not using your pistol. Why didn't you use it, dude? <laughs> Another proper weapon. What is this madness? 
Why are you doing this to me, game? Why didn't that gal pick up a good weapon instead of a freaking sword? Also, I want to comment that this is a flawless experience. Look at those 1% lows. 61 and 73 frames per second on average. This is just great. I could totally play the game like this all day long. 720p doesn't look very good, but at least it's not a blurry mess like some of the newer titles like Cyberbug and Call of Duty Vanguard. At least in the beta, that was just a mess totally when it comes to the graphics. Also, 55 there. It does drop from 60 sometimes. We're here, guys. Oh, boy. Oh, no, 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 no. This is really bad. I'm dead already. Okay, so they just camped there. <laughs> Next up is Ark Survival Evolved. We're playing this one at 1080p using medium settings. Yes, this is the medium settings preset. I just set the textures to low, resolution scale to 100%, and I disabled light bloom because I hate that feature. Um, we're also playing using the low memory mode in this game because, well, 1.5 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, and it seems like the VRAM is still kind of maxed out or at least almost maxed out uh, yeah let's start counting our fps as you can see both gpus are being utilized it's kind of like dota 2 uh, <laughs> both of them are actually giving the same gpu utilization and it's stuttering way too much sometimes by the way i'm not sure if it's because things are loading into the vram and it just doesn't has enough of it now if you can overlook those stutters it might actually be a playable experience we're playing in in a single player uh, environment here by the way but yeah it's it's just not very consistent is it the frame time graph i think it would be a better experience with a single gtx 580 yeah that's it for arc survival evolve it's not smooth at all record Jesus. And now we're playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag from 2014 at the 1080p resolution using high settings. Okay, this is actually really nice, guys. Around 60 FPS here. That's not bad at all. It stutters, though. Like, that's, that's an SLI issue, but it's... I guess it's playable, maybe? Oh my god, lots of smoke effects right there, guys. And it didn't really drop too much. It's pretty good. You know, not gonna lie, I could actually play like this. Doesn't really stutter too much now. Jungle area, let's start counting our frames and let's do this. GPUs are at around 90% usage there. It's stuttering quite a bit. Maybe things are loading into the memory. Actually, the VRAM is maxed out, unfortunately. That's the main issue with these dual GPU cards. NVIDIA might have thought that um, they could develop drivers to utilize the VRAM, the full amount of VRAM on these GPUs, but no, they, they never figured it out. VRAM is not maxed out anymore right here, guys, by the way. It's at 3.5, uh, actually 1.35 gigabytes of usage, and it still stutters a little bit sometimes, as you can see there. Like, the VRAM is at below 1.4 gigabytes of usage. Um, it stutters less, that's for sure, but it still stutters a little bit at times. Uh, don't like it too much, but it is a playable experience, and if it wasn't for SLI, we'd be getting way less FPS, that's for sure. And finally, can it run Crysis? This is Crysis 3, and we're playing it at the 1080p resolution using the high settings. As you can see, I'm gonna show you the advanced graphics. I actually disabled motion blur because, well, it's motion blur. Seems like this one is also kept to 60 something, like 64. I made sure to disable V-Sync in NVIDIA's control panel as well. I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, but yeah, these games, these last two games seem to be kept here. Look at this beautiful game, guys. Wow! I'm not sure why it's stuttering so much right now, but yeah, it's stabilized. It's kind of stabilized. Like, th those frame times are horrible. But both GPUs are nearly maxed out, and it's getting really nice FPS for Crisis 3, that's for sure. At least for a 590. So I just started counting the FPS. 1% lows are already at 30-something just because of the variation in frame time. Um, it's not kept at 64 now. It went up to like 67. But if I look at the sky, it stays at 60-something. It's so weird. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful explosions. 
Shut up, I don't care, I don't care. Let's keep on moving here. CP utilization is quite high, actually. It's going into the hyper threading. Uh, I wonder if the i7 is bottlenecking our 590 in this game. That's kind of weird. Um, I'm not really liking that frame time variation, actually. It's super, super inconsistent. I just locked the FPS to 30 in Rivet Tuner and look at that frame time smoothness now. It's super, super stable. Wow. It's a much better experience, actually. Although this is a first-person shooter game, I think I would choose to play at 30 FPS because it doesn't move from there, basically. Oh boy, massive explosions and it's hanging in there just fine. Look at this. This is just gorgeous, this game. It came out in 2013. And also, the textures don't look half bad and our VRAM is not maxed out. So that's amazing as well, on high settings. I guess that's enough. You can actually play the game very comfortably with 30 FPS, but if you unlock the frames, it's gonna be a stuttery mess. And that's a big, big issue, as we've seen okay. with SLI. All right, guys, do I recommend the GeForce GTX 590 in 2021? No, I don't recommend it. Of course, like, it stutters way too much because of SLI. S SLI is also dead. It consumes 365 watts of power. My room is hot as hell right now, just like the GPU, actually. <laughs> That's been it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this look at this old beast. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.